Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get the game Yakuza Like a Dragon and also Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth working on the Apple Silicon Mac. So there is no Mac port of this game. We're going to have to run the Windows versions of these games on the Apple Silicon Mac. And we're going to be using a translation layer called Crossover in order to do it. And because both of these games check for the AVX CPU instruction set, this is going to be a feature enabled on macOS Sequoia, but you also have to expose it as well using a patcher. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you how to download Download crossover and then modify it using CX Patcher and then expose the AVX instruction set so that the game can actually load up. So this differs a little bit from previous instruction videos which required actual hex editing of the exe files. This version using CX Patcher and expose AVX is going to be a lot simpler to use. We'll also be doing some quick testing on my M1 MacBook Air and also on the M3 Max MacBook Pro. So we're going to be covering both ends of the Mac gaming hardware spectrum and showing you how to get this game running as best as possible on the Apple Silicon Mac. So the first step is going to be to download Crossover. So what I recommend doing is clicking at the link at the top of this video's description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. Once you're taken to the purchase page, you'll be able to enter this promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New. And once you press the arrow button here, it's going to go ahead and apply a 20% off discount, which is pretty huge, off Crossover Plus, which is the version that we recommend for 12 months of support. However, if you want to make sure that this works for you, make sure to check out the 14 day free trial which is what I'm going to be trialing today just click this try now button and then scroll down and all we need to do is enter our email address and name and then click the download trial now button so once crossover is downloaded we're going to copy it over to our applications folder and then we're going to double click to open it for the first time press open it might ask you to install Rosetta 2 just let that install and then we're going to do the free trial or if you have unlocked this already you can enter your details here from the code weavers account so I'm going to try now to start the 14 day free trial and basically we're ready to go ahead and use crossover but the first thing I'm going to do is to quit out and we're going to make the modifications to crossover. This is an optional step that will allow us to use the latest versions of D3D Metal. At the time of recording that's version 2.0 beta 3. So here we're going to be downloading the latest version of CX Patcher which I'll be leaving a link in the description and we're going to be using 0.5.6 and this contains the latest update to Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 which is D3D Metal 2.0 beta 3. So here what we're going to do is go to assets and then download the cxpatcher.app.zip and then put this in our downloads folder. And once that's there, we're going to go to Finder and then go to Downloads. And then we'll go to CX Patcher, double click to extract this. And then we're going to move this into our applications folder. We are going to make sure that we open up Crossover first before we start this process and then close it. And then we're going to double click on CX Patcher. If it says it can't be opened, then go to the Settings menu here, go to System Settings, and then go to Security and Privacy. And then scroll down until we find here, it says CX Patcher can't be opened. It was blocked to protect your Mac. Click Open anyway. And here we can close this and press open anyway then we're going to type in our password and then log in that's okay and this will basically allow us to open up applications which aren't from the app store type in your password press okay so just be aware that of course this is not a supported method of patching crossover this really comes at your own risk do not ask code weavers for support or refund if you're using this method they will not be able to help you if you need help from code weavers then you should be waiting for official support which is probably going to come in the very near future if you want to be able to use this you need to type in this full phrase and then press agree and proceed now cx patch is ready to use so we're going to configure some settings first go to advanced options and then we're going to be enabling dxvk integrate gptk we're going to use a separate bottle path we're going to be advertising avx we're going to be allowing dxvk async and then we can tweak some of these settings too so now we're going to drag and drop crossover into CX Patcher. Now CX Patcher is ready to go. So I double click on crossover. Say so we're going to install Steam. Install. Click yes here. Accept. And now we're just going to go through the standard Windows setup of Steam. And now that's going ahead and downloading Steam. So make sure to allow any kind of permissions that the bottle requests. And then I also advise turning on D3D Metal and also the M-Sync option and then reboot the bottle. This will allow us to run DirectX 11 and 12 games through Crossover. Then we're going to make sure to launch Steam. So here we're going to log in with our Steam account. So if you don't have one already, you can create one for free. So what we're going to do now is make a purchase of Yakuza Like a Dragon. The fix from CX Patcher for exposing AV VX CPU instruction sets also works for the game Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth 2. So that'll work on either of those games. Just go ahead and add this to your library if it isn't added already. You're going to be downloading the Windows version of this game. And then make sure to do a download and then put it inside your crossover bottle. Also, it's a really good idea to play this game with a controller. So I've got my Xbox Series controller. You can also do this with the PlayStation DualSense controller. I'm going to put my controller into pairing mode by holding down the pairing button here. 
and then the Xbox light is going to start flashing. You can also do this on DualSense controller as well. Then we're going to go to system settings and then we're going to go to Bluetooth and then scroll down until under near by devices we see that the Xbox wireless control has popped up here. We're going to press connect and then that'll just take a moment for that to connect and once it's connected the light on the controller is going to go a solid light like that and then that's now paired up. So here I've loaded up the game with my controller and we're playing on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip. So I've got the settings on graphics set to the highest and FSR is set to quality mode so it's upscaling very slightly and this isn't too bad at all considering the fact that this is a Direct X 12 game. You can see in the top right hand side of the Metal HUD that we're running game porting toolkits D3D Metal 2.0 Beta 3 and it's also running through Rosetta 2. So considering the number of translation layers at work, this is actually very good performance considering that this is actually a Windows game, not a Mac game at all. And it looks like it manages to load and play very nicely. So one thing that you're going to notice is shader compilation stutter. So that just means that when animations load up for the first time, it's going to stutter slightly but it's going to be cached and the next time the animation runs it's going to run a little bit smoother. Generally speaking this game seems to work great on the Mac. Here I'm just going to be demonstrating what the actual combat looks like. It's quite smooth actually but this is pretty natural given that we're running this on the most powerful Mac that you can basically buy at the moment, the M3 Max chip. Next I'm testing the game running on the M1 MacBook Air. So this only has eight gigabytes of RAM. We're running this on the low setting with FSR 3 set to quality mode. So of course the game is gonna be a lot more stuttery. We're working with a lot less system RAM. So this MacBook Air only has eight gigabytes. And despite this, you can see on the metal HUD on the top right, we're actually only consuming 5.87 gigabytes in this opening sequence. However, additional headroom would probably be a very good idea. Anyway that's my look at the Yakuza games with AVX checks on the Apple Silicon Mac. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.